indeed uh, a rarest of the rare moment in world politics as sworn enemies Iran and the US engaged in a high profile prisoner swap. Iran released a Chinese American student named Xi Wang who was detained in Iran since 2016. Three years back, Wang had visited Iran for an academic research project, but he was arrested and accused of spying under the garb of 17. He was convicted on the same charges and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Both Wang and his family had categorically denied the charges. In exchange for Wang, the Americans released an Iranian scientist, Masood Soleimani. Soleimani is a domain expert in stem cell research and regenerative medicine and was arrested by U.S. authorities in 2018. The U.S. alleges that Soleimani tried to export biological materials to Iran in violation of the charge that Soleimani denies. Foreign Minister of Iraq, Javed Zarif, accompanied Soleimani during the prisoner swap. The freed scientist, however, had some harsh words for the U.S. establishment, saying that the Americans are scared of Iranian knowledge. این نشون میده که بغض و کینه اونا به ما نسبت به چیزای علمی اونا دانش ما میترسن اونا هیچ ما نمیترسن به خاطر همین بعد تا اونجا که میتونیم خودمون رو قوی کنیم تو بحث علمی که ان شاء الله بتونیم چشم دشمن ان شاء الله کور middle man in this landmark prisoner swap was switzerland it was in zurich that the prisoners were swapped by the two warring countries both javed zarif and the us state department thanked the swiss government for enabling the operation Donald Trump seems to consider the prisoner swap as an indication that there is still a possibility of peace between the two countries. He thanked Iran for what he termed as fair negotiations. Iran's foreign minister, however, was much more guarded in his remarks. Javed Zarif said that he was glad both the men would soon be back with their families, but at no point thanked the US administration. He later said that Soleimani's American jailers were enraged by his scientific promise. با تبادل یک زندان در ایران زندان بود و بر اساس رعفت اسلامی امروز صبح مورد بخشش قرار گرفت و به آمریکا بازگشت و در برابرش ما این استاد بزرگوار رو امروز در ایران داریم بیشترین چیزی که این زندانبانان و قضات و دادستان های آمریکایی رو به ویژه عصبانی می کرده میزان دستاورت های علمی ایشون In the meanwhile, Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives are met behind closed doors to prepare for what could be the final week of the months old impeachment inquiry against U.S. President Donald Trump. The House Judiciary Committee released a report ahead of Monday's impeachment hearings. While the report does not accuse Trump of impeachable offenses, it lays the groundwork for Monday's hearing. Monday's hearing could be the most crucial in the months-long impeachment saga where evidence against Trump will be presented by the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committees. There could also be a possible introduction of articles of impeachment. Now, the Judiciary Committee report will focus on two possible articles of impeachment. The first accuses President Trump of abuse of power in his dealings with Ukraine, where he asked the Ukrainian president to investigate his political rival, Joe Biden. The second is the obstruction of Congress for refusing to cooperate with investigating committees. Pursuing this in a scrupulously equal, fair, open, and transparent way. That's um, the reason we're so disappointed that President Trump uh, has decided to break with uh, every other president who's gone through this process in deciding not to come and participate. He has denounced it as a hoax, as a fraud. He said it was BS uh, a couple of days ago. Um, he should come forward and explain what he thinks is a hoax or what he thinks is a fraud. The report now released is an update to the previous Judiciary Committee reports that were issued in 1974 and 1998 during the impeachment proceedings of Presidents Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton. Trump will be the fourth U.S. President to face impeachment proceedings. None were removed from office, although Richard Nixon resigned as, the, as he faced uh, almost certain impeachment in 1974 over the Watergate scandal.
Earlier, the White House had refused to face this. In a letter sent to the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, it urged Democrats to end this inquiry now. Meanwhile, Trump continued to call the hearings a hoax. Well, I don't know. I know this, that the impeachment thing is a total hoax. The numbers have totally swung our way. They don't want to see impeachment. Especially in the swing states, they've swung away. I've never seen a swing like this because people realize it's a total hoax. We had a perfect conversation. It was only a conversation. Nothing came out of the conversation except good relationship with Ukraine. And the people see that it's just a continuation. And I'm looking forward to seeing the IG report. I hear they're announcing it on Monday. So what's next for the 45th president of the United States? The Democrats are keen to hold a vote on impeachment in the House of Representatives before the end of this year, with the prospect of a trial in the Senate as early as January. The impeachment motion approval needs a majority in the House of Representatives. The process will then only move to Senate, where a trial will be held. The Supreme Court Chief Justice presides over this trial. It's only after a final approval and a two-third majority in Senate that Trump can be removed from office.